Hello, welcome back. So yesterday we talked about how to not be concerned um, about constantly speaking life and why we talked about that. And so if you didn't see that um, devotional, go look for the one uh, about uh, not speaking life. And that was yesterday. And um, the reason we, that that might benefit you to watch that first is this kind of follows behind it. So um, I would love to share this next part with you and um, go ahead and grab your Bible and pen and paper and a cup of coffee or glass of water, <laughs> whatever you want to do and come join me because um, we want to talk a little bit more about how speaking life might become a problem. And um, so knowing me, uh, we know that I care a lot and you might not know me. If you don't know me, welcome. I'm excited to get to know you and go ahead and put comments in and I'd love to hear more about who you are. Um, but I've always been um, really impressed with how important our words are. But this has been something that the Father's really placed on my heart in the last few weeks. And um, I wanted to dig into it because I want to help you find a way to not feel like a phony and um, to live from an authentic place in your relationship with the Father, knowing that your words are important, but being able to speak your words with authenticity. So today we're going to talk about whether you're fruit focused or whether you're seed and soil savvy. <laughs> and so what that means is, is your focus the fruit that's produced? from your life, the words you say, the things you choose, or is your focus the seed that's been planted in your heart? Is your focus the soil that will receive the seed? So we hunger to produce good fruit and we desire love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, right? And we wonder why we're not patient. We might even feel shame when we aren't gentle. But do we remember that those things come to us based on what we've participated in and they come out of us based on what we've put in? That fruit is produced when we're filled, when we're surrounded, taught by, and saturated in the spirit. There are consequences of what we put in. They're not just what automatically pops out. And so to learn more about that, go to Galatians 5, 22 through 23. You don't get patient by scrolling Facebook. And you don't become kind from participating in gossip. You aren't filled with peacefulness if you've soaked in the latest news. We are condemned by our words, not because of the words themselves, but because they display the health of our hearts. And you can go to Matthew 12, 33 through 37, that talks about that. So let's look at Matthew 13, 14 through 17 right now. Okay, so go ahead and grab your Bible if you can. Um, it's really important that we go through this together or you can look through it after you are done here. So this is the parable of the sower and the seed. And Yeshua explains um, the parable first, and then he goes to his disciples and explains what it means. So I want you to read that whole section so we can talk about what each of these things mean. But the seed determines what grows. And if the soil isn't healthy, then no matter how good the seed is, there's not going to be fruit. Now listen to that carefully. That's really important to know because the seed is the word of God. Yeshua himself even said, the seed is the word. And all the people heard it. They heard every little bit, every different kind of soil there was, heard the word. But there wasn't fruit if the soil wasn't ready. So our soil needs to be soft and pliable. The trampled hard places need to be tilled. The rocky soil needs to be soft and deep. The thorns and thistles they need to be pulled out. And if all this work isn't done, the soil will not be ready to receive the seed. 
Every one of these wrong hearted conditions points to someone who heard the word. It wasn't people who were ignoring the word. It wasn't people who were going their own way and not wanting to have anything to do with the seed. The first heart condition was a trampled hard heart that had become insensitive and couldn't understand the word that was spoken. Yeshua called this seed that had fall, the seed that had fallen by the road. And the second heart condition was the rocky, shallow soil. This person also heard the word. They even received it with joy. But then affliction and persecution because of that word stole it away. Then there was another heart condition. This one was soil that was full of thorns. And Yeshua said that this person also heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitful cares of riches choked the word before fruit could be produced. So what are we learning here? What we're hearing is that the words that come out of our mouth and the actions we choose to display come from so much more than just hearing the word. If we're not hearing and seeing with understanding, then our heart is not soft enough to receive the word and our heart will not be ready to turn to him to be healed. And you can go to Isaiah 6, 9 through 10 to hear about that. Because an unhealed heart will always struggle to speak good words. Trying to speak good words while your heart is still wounded is what exposes you as an actor. Does that mean we shouldn't care about the words that come out of our mouths? Of course not. No, there is still death and there's still life in the power of your tongue. But if speaking good words is a source of shame because you just can't do it, then we need to look deeper because there's an issue there. There's a wound that's keeping you from authenticity. If your heart is murky, your words will be murky. So to change your words, what do you do? <laughs> you change your heart. And to change the heart, we have to change what goes into the heart. And to change what goes into our heart, we need to change what we listen to and what we watch. And to change what we listen to and what we watch, we have to seek for the hidden treasures of understanding. So the soil around a hidden treasure, you know, if you've ever watched a movie where they're looking for the hidden treasure, the soil around it is always soft because the soil's been dug up and worked with and manipulated. So let's move to Proverbs 2, 1 through 12. To be able to have the understanding necessary to receive the seed, into the soil of our heart. We need to seek for understanding as if it were hidden treasure, because it is. Understanding, discernment, and wisdom come by going on a treasure hunt. We must seek for it with all that is in us. And once we have understanding, then our soil is ready to receive the word. We hear, then the things that come out of our heart from what we heard based on its fullness, will be the good fruit we're hungry for. And the hard work of saying the right words isn't going to be such hard work anymore. So go ahead and click subscribe. Tell me that you liked this video. Comment if this is helpful to you and if there's anything you want me to talk about in the future. Share the video with your friends if you'd like. And I will be back on tomorrow to talk more about how to get soft soil, how to get good words and good fruit from a healthy heart.